All right, if anybody wants to see the beetle up close, we have it, um, have it there. He's got his wings out. I think we've got, no, we've got some mating going on, Dick. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, That's their wings some. came out and something from the rear of the one on top. Uh-huh. <laughs> we are the one on the bottom. Uh-huh. Well, that's another sign that I know that they like where they are, right? You know, I mean, we used to do that with ladybugs. We'd put them out, you know, and we'd spray out sugar water. And people would say, well, how do you know if they like where they are? And then I would just say, well, I'm, I don't, here's a slide. You know, I, they're willing to invest their resources now. She's got a handheld scope, so we'll show what those larvae look like, too. Because they look, they look a lot like ladybug larvae. Can you see them? Oh, well, yeah, I do. Yeah, here, they're moving around. Let me knock them down because they're about to come out. There we go. Oh, yeah, they're active little buggers. Oh, yeah, they are. Oh, yeah, they're making piles. <laughs> so now if they poop in there, it glows bright orange under ultraviolet. <laughs> oh, yeah, there we go. Let's, do the, let's get a larva right here. Man, we got larva right. There's one. Maybe. All right, that's an, that's an oversac with eggs. Okay. There's a larva. By gosh. All right, look at that thing. Oh, it just ate a crawler. Oh, oh he's got it. Ah, he's taking it with him. Oh, no. He probably already ate it. We, we could have seen that beautiful act of violence. What is that, Dick? That's a Larry larva. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that's what we want to see. Okay. Now, okay, so we've got that. You've seen the adults, you've seen the larva. And then what we can do too is um Well, if you've got that branch, we can show under that scope uh, maybe the ultraviolet. We c I can just walk around and show you. See that bright orange right there? Oh yeah, yeah. That's what you're looking for. There it is. Oh yeah, this thing will, you really, yeah. Normally, yeah, this is a one watt detective ultraviolet flashlight here. So if you look right in that one spot, it's real bright orange and that's, that's just all predator poop. So bed bug poop glows green because they fed on your blood. It's like tracking a deer or something. You know, if you've, if you've tagged a deer and it's still walking, you can use ultraviolet light and go find a find a blood trail. So you have, you actually have four different colors here. You have orange, yellow is a damaged egg. You have that chartreuse color that we showed earlier, and then blue. So you have, it looks like a Christmas tree lit up. It's very, very neat to see the whole thing. I can just show you real quick. See that, see that oh, orange yeah, right yeah. there? Mm -hmm. Big time. There you oh go. yeah, big time. Yep. And then see the blue, those are intact oversacks where it's kind of jewel-like, yeah, you know, yeah. real liquidy looking. Okay, so that one was damaged earlier. There's, there's, some, there's some orange in it. There's some orange. There's a big, just under your finger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, and they've made their way down. Yeah, yeah, there's poop that's dropped off. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. But that's a good, what color is the poop? Bright pink. Oh, See that? Good. It looks like a charcoal briquette. It's real orange. <laughs> that's See? the poop. That's the poop. And then the intact oversacks are those are the blue white. But you can see there's predation out there. Right. So, so there's a lot of predation on this. That's that's the nice thing. You can see just tons of. When you see that bright orange, you know that's. This time of year. Now, later on in the season, you'll get harmonia ladybugs and surfids and all these other things that'll come out. And then these guys have been ripping down here, just chewing those all to pieces. There's probably a lot intact. Isn't oversacks that aren't damaged. Okay. So, so all you got to do, we could even do this on Christmas trees because the other thing that happens with them. Those loopers that lay eggs, their eggs glow bright blue, so you can find their, you know what I mean? I can find their eggs, I can wipe them off. They're gone. <laughs> you don't even need to do it. And a lot of those caterpillars like um, Comstock, Sasser, and stuff like that, they all glow. Mm. So you can find them real quick. 
If you had them, you could spray with BT, you know what I mean, kill your caterpillars. That's what you needed to do. So where'd you get this black light, Doc? <laughs> I ordered this. This is a detective black light. So, but BioQuip used to sell them, but now they've gone out of business. But this is a one-watt detective ultraviolet. This is a crime scene flashlight is what it is. That one worked from Amazon. <laughs> Does it have to be a certain? 395, you want to go to 380. See if you can find a 380. Oh, so a number. Well, that's the other thing that I realized. I started buying black lights and half of them didn't work because they weren't low enough wavelength. This is 385. Oh. 385 is good. What do you see there? Yeah, that's don't, expensive. if you get close to 400 nanometer, this stuff doesn't light up. But once you get down to about three, I mean, that's another thing I had to figure out. I accidentally had one of those two lights actually had a good good bulb in it. The other one didn't. If I'd have grabbed the wrong one when I went out there, I never would have figured this out. Somebody would have eventually. Yeah, 385 was good. So that's the other thing that works really good that I can tell you guys for this is if you have like an old knitting loop, like I've got my mother's knitting loop. So I took that T8 round circular bulb out and put an ultraviolet T8 bulb in there. So that's up there when that floating arm and so it, it does ultraviolet all the way around. And I can lay my camera in there and let it take a time, because it's crazy to try to take a picture of this stuff. It, you know, it shows up gray or something, you know what I mean? And I'm like, I have to d do time lapse. But you can see that it works. For, just for a little, little context, and we, I, I didn't really speak about this earlier. So I, I came in as a, primarily as a Christmas tree agent in, uh, in, in 2002. And, I, you know, I, I was doing work with the Christmas tree industry, and then we started getting these calls from homeowners, Extension did. Uh, uh, Avery County started getting them, Ash County started getting them. Hey, our, tree, our hemlocks are falling out, our hemlocks are dying, what's going on? The landscapers, like, you know, uh, Lear and David and others were saying, hey, this, this thing, this, uh, this hemlock woolly adelgid is a serious, serious problem. Um, we were getting, you know, 10 to 20 calls per week. I know the landscapers were getting that level of calls. And it was really just a, it was a, it was a scramble to determine what was the, you know, how, how to treat this thing. And, and, and at first, uh, you know, there, there were a bunch of different delivery methods that the, uh, that sort of the, the chemical industry and, and the uh, arborists and the landscapers were, we're experimenting with to find an effective way to, to just slow this thing down. Eventually, there, there were two, two sort of uh, you know, chemicals that were found to be very, you know, effective in, in you know, stopping hemlock woolly adelgid in, in its track. So you know, we really did need the, uh, uh, it, you know, as, the, as the extension service and as landscapers, in, in order to get this thing under control, you know, we did hit it hard and heavy with, uh, with the chemical treatments. And so, you know, Extension, our, our, our organization is based on, you know, providing and uh, supplying the best research-based information to the public. And that's, with this, with this particular pest, it was a, I, I mean, it was a triage between, uh, between the, you know, the Forest Service was working on it, Extension specialists at NC State were working on it, uh, our landscapers were, were working on it, uh, our, the individual agents in each of the counties were trying to glean all this information and take all the, you know, everything that was coming out on this pest. Hey, does this work? What about a soil drench? What about these, this capsule injection where you actually inject, you know, with a hydraulic, uh, you know, pump into the cambium of the tree? What about just spraying? What about trying oil? Okay, maybe we can do that. Well, is it better to do it in the spring? It's the better, okay, what's the life cycle of this thing? So we had all this information that was sort of coming together in the, in the early to mid 2000s uh, while, uh, Dr. McDonald and other entomologists were really researching and looking into, into the predators. But for, for our perspective, from Extension's perspective, you know, we get more calls from the landowners, from the farmers. Hey, how can I treat this thing? Hey, do I have this on? Can you come out and see how my trees are doing? And so, you know, over the years in the mid 2000s, early into the 20, 2010s, you know, Dick and some of the other landscapers were saying, hey, we're starting to see this, this predator beetle now, all right? Uh, and then Dick would say, the predator beetle's everywhere. A couple years ago, you'll find it everywhere. And I was like, well, that's great. I mean, it's not that I didn't trust you, but as a research-based organization, we have to provide, you know, we, we, we wanted to, to, to see that. So we could say, so extent when, when uh, landowners who might have, you know, three or four hemlocks around the house, 
but 85 hemlocks in their forest that they didn't have the money or the time or interest in investing because, you know, the chemical treatments can be expensive. And if you're a landowner with hundreds and, you know, in the case of Sweet, you know, sometimes thousands of hemlocks, it's really not practical or affordable. You just can't spend the money for chemical treatments.